Welcome to WCSO Morning News. With your host, cabinet member Chelsea Medic. Before we even got in the canoe, but she still said we had to get in. Yeah. It was like all these times that um, like I would kick my shoes off while I was playing and Lee, who sits behind me, would like take his bow and like steal the shoe and hide it somewhere so I'd be running around after orchestra looking for my other shoe and he'd just be standing there laughing. The, the saga of being a bass player for my entire time, ever, um, and it involves watching everyone in the orchestra. I've watched you all. I guarantee you I have the best seat in the orchestra. I can see everyone. And so some of, some of the sections are really interesting to watch. For example, second half of all the violins. I don't know what it is, but they have like the bobblehead dog effect whenever, or not dog, but doll effect every time that Dr. Summer makes some kind of a, a comment that is like mildly enlightening. All the <laughs> violins immediately like bob as if like there's something parakeet about what he said. Um, so that that's always fun. Well, I haven't been in orchestra that much, so probably the tour, just getting to know everybody mm -hmm. better was really fabulous. Even the bus time was fun in its own way, so. <laughs> we suck at this. Can we start over? <laughs> but the favorite, my favorite section to watch, hands down, is the oboe section. And the only thing I need to say about that is John Overholt. I mean, he was <laughs> absolutely hilarious to watch. I mean, t this year there, there have been some good moments of watching oboes, but he, he had this like tendril of hair that he would, he would press. <laughs> <the bar first. laughs> and I would find myself literally gawking and just like <laughs> laughing at the, I mean, not laughing out loud, but just being like, oh, he's like really, he was like so focused on the music, but he would be there like, working this curl on the side of his face. So that was probably one of my favorite memories. Daniel decided to like, peace out, go to Hawaii. So like, yeah. missed the first couple of rehearsals. He was supposed to be principal. And, then, and I remember looking at the seating and everyone's names are there. And then Daniel's at the bottom, like in bold. Daniel Wilder will be sitting in the back of the section. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I thought you like missed your seating audition, so he like. Did, yeah. Or you did, and then he just like said, "Okay, well, your last chair." And I'm like, yeah. "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> Coming to ask me to have quiet time was a, uh, yeah. I didn't know how to take that. Yeah, I felt like they were just being really loud up front. And we're all just really holy. Yeah. 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 Everyone got really spiritual on that bus. <laughs> Whew. Man. So much quiet. Especially in the meetings. <laughs> whole week of Tim Bedard on the bus. But especially the entire day of hearing all of his non-negotiables for his future wife in <laughs> prioritized order. <laughs> um, the one we still can't figure out is fresh and clean. I think, was that like number two? Number two on the list, fresh, fresh and, clean. and clean. We still don't know what it means. Maybe playing cards on an English horn case on the bus was pretty fun. Watching all of Lord of the Rings on the bus was pretty fun. Yeah. I don't know. This year I've enjoyed watching people fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not any, anybody specifically. <laughs> 
watch it yet. <laughs> That's like my favorite part. William, <laughs> stop sleeping. <laughs> <coughs> Okay. Are you there, princess? Yeah, I'm gonna just take off my clothes. <laughs> oh, okay. I will wait. Excuse for you. Just hanging out with Maria, even though she could be. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be listening to this, but um, no, we 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 have the very philosophical debates all the time about absolutely nothing. So that's, in the back, that's how we pass time in the back. That's what we have to do. Yeah, yeah, like and then missing. Oh, missing oh yeah, yeah. When this year and this year. When when she couldn't count parts, which happened a lot, she would uh, I would count for her at like the counting jellyfish. So I would count all her parts. Jellyfish. Yeah, because she couldn't she couldn't count. So I would I would like conduct. I need to I need to do that. Aww. Well, uh, my favorite orchestra memory for sure has to be the uh, the Baylor concert. Definitely. I mean, I just think that was a that was a great memory. <laughs> <laughs> Went well. Went really well. Went really well. <laughs> My entire experience in orchestra has kind of been one giant embarrassing <laughs> moment. <laughs> so, um, let me check my notes real sure. fast. Sure. <laughs> I like didn't sleep all year and <laughs> fell asleep repeatedly in orchestra. And Doc Zongle would like kind of, you know, when he's talking about someone, he doesn't say their name, but you know, it's you. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I mean, I'd probably say the, the Baylor concert was a, was, was a pretty embarrassing pretty moment. Best memory and most embarrassing. Yeah, yeah it's one of, those, one of those anomalies, you know. It's just, memorable. It's, uh, it's memorable, but you don't yeah. really want to remember it. Three of us and Carrie Engsberg stayed at a host family over tour. And the three of us were downstairs in the kitchen talking to the mom, just like eating snacks and stuff. And Carrie has been gone for a while. And we, <laughs> we go back to our room and we all check our phones and we get this text the same text from Carrie, saying like, what did it say? We are, help, haha, uh -huh. I'm stuck in the bathroom, the doorknob is off, hello, uh, come get me. <laughs> so basically, she had been upstairs in the bathroom for like 30 minutes because the, the doorknob fell off of the door, so she was trapped in the bathroom. And she didn't want to like knock on the door to get anyone's attention, she so was she, just being so polite, Texas lol, nice the doorknob fell oh. off, haha, -ha, I'm trapped. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Tell the tale, yeah, John, Daniel. I remember that last semester or yeah. year or whatever was guest conducting and oh. was taking his bow after he conducted it like hit his head really hard on the yeah. and I guess that's really mean. I don't know. <laughs> they probably told this story last year. They did. <laughs> All of them were told do not take a bow on the podium because you will hit your face. And <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't just his head though, it was like his nose was like bleeding. The girls decided to prank the boys by oh, filling gosh. up like 200 water balloons. And, <laughs> okay, in general, musicians can't throw that well, especially <laughs> female musicians can't throw that well. We so we're, throw we're outside, <laughs> we're outside getting ready to sabotage the boys with all these water balloons. And we tell Dr. Somerville to let the boys know that we're waiting outside. <laughs> and of course they know exactly what's going on. So the boys like sneak around back and we didn't even have a chance to try to throw the water balloons at them. I think they ended up getting most of the water balloons and throwing them at us. But I mean, that's kind of just what was bound to happen anyway. Yeah. When we were playing the Brahms Requiem with John Nelson. I got like a time, rehearsal time wrong or something. And um, yeah, I was in my apartment oh, when I lived cool. in College Ave. Um, <coughs> I like, you know, like, took, oh, yeah. a, I took a shower and I was like, it's like such a nice afternoon as so preparing for the big rehearsal with John Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> and I get a phone call. I think I was watching TV or something, you know, just taking it easy. And yeah, Faith was like, um, Hey, Dan, are you okay? Like, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dr. Summer wants to know if you were alright or something. Uh, and I was like, yeah, that was really sweet of <laughs> Checking it on me. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, because rehearsal started 15 minutes ago. And I was like, oh, okay. Wow, yeah, whoopsie. My sophomore year, we were playing The Planets um, by Holst, and the first time we rehearsed it, um, Dr. Somerville was like, start at like letter E or whatever. 
in Mars, and I didn't realize that there was like this big organ like boom right when we came in. So we started at E, and I just like <laughs> like out of my seat, and everyone turned and looked at me, and I was like. <laughs> moment was when we played in chapel about a month or so ago. Um, I got there 10 minutes early like I should and then when I got there I realized that I didn't have my oboe. I also didn't have my music but I didn't realize that at the time. So I went run. I left my oboe at home because um, I'd taken it home with me because I was going to spend time with family. This is rambling on. Um, I went, long story short, I ended up running into chapel sitting down in my seat as the bell was ringing. Complete mess. When I sat down, I realized I forgot my music. Um, Kevin Kupana came to the rescue with his iPhone. So I played that concert off of a combination of his iPhone and played the Copeland from memory. I don't think Dr. Somerville ever knew that. I'm sorry, but it totally worked. <laughs> I never want to do it again. <laughs> Give me a W. W. Give me C. C. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. What's that spell? W C S O. I was that. I knew it was gonna be a great tour when I saw that. That started off. That was a great moment. Wow. Of 2011 was the snowpocalypse, and it hit on a Tuesday night. So campus was kind of like closed down. We're all waiting for an email to say that orchestra has been canceled. But no, it never comes. So 415 arrives and we all show up in E102 and have our rehearsal. And we get out of rehearsal. And I think out of the kindness of his heart, Dr. Somerville might have let us out like 15 minutes early. Maybe before, five. Maybe five minutes, I don't know, but um, we get outside and there's like at least six inches of snow and we can barely walk back to the conserve and Christy's car is already like snowing, so snow she ends up walking home. <laughs> um, yeah, that was kind of insane. And then classes are canceled the next day, but no, orchestra must go on. Always. Always. Oh, first time I got a text message from him oh. <laughs> and it was signed DS and it was like, who is this and why do they care if I photocopy the door <laughs> And then I figured it out. It stressed me out. I'm always really, I like it when he gets really excited when he's conducting mm -hmm. and when he's smiling when he's really happy. So it makes me feel happy because that means we're probably doing something good. <laughs> I really value the time I spend getting to know Dr. Somerville, especially over tour. Um, I think that that really helped me understand like the relationship between a conductor and an orchestra and how just how important that is for having a good sense of camaraderie which in turn like boosts the the whole feel of the orchestra the whole enthusiasm that comes behind the playing and that is something that's so important. No, well actually I really appreciated like his um, arrangement of of the Father's Will Begotten for the Christmas Festival last year that was like a bigger than a moment maybe but like it means a lot to me and I thought it was really well done and really meaningful and effective yeah Oh, yeah. Conducting lessons to on a more serious note. Mm -hmm. uh, those were great times with Dr. Summerville. Uh, just really uh, learning from him, uh, learning about uh, what makes uh, rehearsals go well, um, how to plan, yeah. how to mm -hmm. go about a score. Um, it was it were good. It's like... Ah. I really enjoyed working with Dr. Somerville in preparation for the concerto competition this year. That, that was awesome because it really... I gained a lot of respect working with him on that. How about <laughs> practice? Practice. <laughs> practice late. <laughs> Don't be late. Yeah. Dr. Somerville eats late musicians for breakfast. Sounds good. Apparently I've been eating for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. I've been eating a couple times. Don't fall asleep in orchestra. And have lots of fun. <laughs> Chill section. I know you're all scared of me, but I love each and every one of you. <laughs> yes. You practice too. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's been a lot of fun uh, being in an orchestra as good as this one, and um, mm. kind of hit me uh, the other day when uh, somebody asked when I would be performing next um, after I graduate mm. from here, and I I didn't know. Um, so take advantage of the opportunities you have mm. here. Um, yeah. To be in an orchestra like this um, and to to work under the baton of a of a great conductor um, mm. and uh, just take those moments in, uh, but more importantly, just invest in uh, invest in people in the orchestra. It's uh, it's really worth yeah. it. Um, I think you'll find um, that people are are in these orchestras. Uh, play great music but also meet great people. I have to say just love what you do, enjoy every moment of it. As a senior leaving this, I'm realizing I've been in band or orchestra for by default since grade school. Now it's coming to an end, so enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. I think um, I was thinking about it and I realized that this is probably the only time in my life that I get to play with musicians of such a high caliber who all love the Lord um, and who all dedicate their music making to Him. And that's something that I think is so precious. And I'll never, never forget that. And I really appreciate the time I have left playing with this orchestra. Mm -hmm. Try to listen more. Because you can get really stuck in your own part, and orchestra can be really boring if you do that. But you have like a wider mindset, and like you can learn a lot every time. Oh, I love T-Dog. T-Dog. But also... Josiah Who's and Kevin. Okay. I have a crush on them. Wow. Because they're so uh, cute. I love them. I wish they were in my class. I mean, <laughs> this is a tough one because there's so many good options. There are lots of good options. Maybe for carrying my suitcase up the stairs on tour when I was in very much distress, Corin Royard. Really Thank you. I hope you can be my my freshman crush. I think that. Corin is really wonderful, and I had a really embarrassing interaction with him where I like got like really flustered. So now you know why I was so weird in Saga that one time when you like actually asked me how I was doing, and I talked about the whoopee cushion. Um, now you know that I didn't know how to respond to Corin. I already gave mine. What is? Nobody, everyone needs to huh? What? Okay. <laughs> 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 I invoke the marriage clause. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> the marriage clause. Yeah. I would probably just have to say Tim Bedard. Call me maybe. I don't know. I like I like everybody. Maybe I'll say I'll say Alex. I I like <laughs> him because I like him because he's very excited. Um, oh, Margaret just... Winchell. There, there's well, Margaret. Go. Good. <laughs> yes. I, Thank you. I like her. But Christy, on the other hand, oh, do I? <laughs> He's in the first violin section, and oh. she misses a lot of her entrances because she likes to turn around and stare at him. Hmm. Who can it be? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, oh I'll say so I'll say Tim player. because. Aww. He's so very serious about his oral skills homework, and I really <laughs> appreciate that. Oh, um, are you the teacher? I mean, I obviously. I'm intimidated. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'll be.